Good Day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, David Arushanian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, Azerbaijani troops attempting to advance into Armenia to raise flag pushed back by countermeasures. Baku's unilateral decision to create a checkpoint on the Berzo Road contradicts efforts to build confidence between the parties. Borel, the Azerbaijani side has obstructed the entry of array registered cities citizens into Artsakh, Giram Stepanyan. The presentation of the book Hatred of Armenia will take place. Franco-Armenian Project, Archaeological Research for Heritage Conservation, awarded European Heritage Prize. David Arushanyan was born on November 25, 1989 in Yerevan, the capital of Soviet Armenia and the family of Nikolai and Lydia Arushanyan. In 1996 to 2006, David Arushanyan studied at Yerevan Primary School No. 166 named after Arto Mikoyan. In 2006, he entered the Vazgensarksia Military University of the Ministry of Defense of Armenia, from which he graduated in 2010 with high academic performance and with the rank of Lieutenant of the Armed Forces of Armenia. As an officer of the Artsakh Defense Army, David Arushanyan directly participated in the Armenia Azerbaijani war initiated by the Baku authorities that began on the morning of September 27, 2020, defending the Madaghis Talish defensive line of the Republic of Artsakh. On September 29, at Mount Aregasar, Major David Arushanyan, together with his colleagues, enters into battle against a large number of the armed forces of Baku. Having twice received an order to retreat from the command, he did disobeys and destroys more than four Azerbaijani armored vehicles together with the personnel and leads to the loss of a large number of manpower. During the battle, the Azerbaijani armed forces shoot down Major Arushanyan's infantry fighting vehicle, as a result of which he is wounded. Major Arushanyan gets out of his hit APC, sits in another APC and continues the unequal fight until the ammunition runs out. David Arushanyan then climbs into the third armored vehicle and continues fighting, driving his armored vehicle deep into the Azerbaijani army. Major Arushanyan died when his infantry fighting vehicle crashed into an Azerbaijani armored personal courier and blew it up. Hovik Asatarian and Aren Chobanyan fought together with Major David Arushanyan. Thanks to their actions, the advance of numerous units of the Azerbaijani armed forces has been stopped. Major David Arushanyan was posthumously awarded the highest title of Hero of Artsakh for exceptional services to the Republic of Artsakh in protecting and ensuring the security of the motherland during the war for his bravery. Western Armenia TV presents the Museum of Armenian History from the 80s to 20th centuries and the collection of traditional Armenian jewelry from the 6th and 17th centuries. The samples are classified according to type, method of application, place of preparation and time. In this above-mentioned centuries, in different origins of Armenia and the Armenian world, Van Mush, Bayazet, Sivri, Hisar, Sebastia, Shapingara, Hisar, Alashkert, Malatya, Bitli, Skarin, etc., these are the jewels made by Armenian goldsmiths, worn by the Armenian girl, an Armenian woman who has become a mother and an Armenian woman who has reached a respectable age. In the 80s to 20th century, jewelry was made of gold, silver and non-precious metals and alloys, natural stones, amber, pearl, coral, sandal, wood, glass, etc. were used for jewelry and for pearls associated with metal pieces. The museum's jewelry collection has been assembled over many years. Some of it was brought here by the Armenian Ethnographic Society. Others were acquired through ethnographic research expeditions and local purchases, and some came to the museum thanks to donors. A significant part of the jewelry from Western Armenia has been transferred to the Museum of Armenian History at the Edmiati Museum, which acquired it mainly with fraternal aid funds. Unfortunately, information on these jewels is incomplete, as most of them were obtained under difficult conditions from people who immigrated. In some cases, it is not even known how the jewels were used, and sometimes the names are in foreign languages. Jewelry is not just a luxury item, it is the expression of nations, aesthetic perceptions, way of thinking, feelings, tastes, and style, and is directly linked to the ideas, worldview, costumes, traditions, rituals, and vocations of the ethnic group. Jewelry says a lot about the way of thinking psychologically and beliefs of our not so distant ancestors. Armenian jewelry gives an idea of the level of goldsmithing and craftsmanship as works by Armenian masters are featured, just as architecture, music, miniatures, and all other branches of art are national, so too is the art of jewelry. 
The National Security Service Border Guard say that a group of servicemen of the Azerbaijani Border Guards attempting to advance into the territory of Armenia from the direction of the Hakari Bridge around 8.14 June 15 with the purpose of raising a flag in the territory of Armenia. As a result of measures taken by the Armenian side, the attempt by the Azerbaijani servicemen to advance and install a flag in the territory of Armenia was thwarted. The NSS Border Guard said in a statement, as of 10 o'clock the situation was relatively stable. Baku's unilateral decision to set up a checkpoint on the Berzo Road truly contradicts effort to build confidence between the parties. The EU High Commissioner for Foreign Policy and Security Affairs, Joseph Borrell, made such a statement during the European Parliament hearings on relations between the Armenian Baku authorities and the situation on the Berzo Road, noting that the area is not the responsibility of the EU mission. But we are currently trying to find a solution to this specific problem. Don't say we are doing nothing. Just a few days ago, an important meeting meeting was held with the French President, the German Chancellor and the President of the EU Council in Moldavia. Another meeting will be held in Brussels in July. In other words, we are doing everything we can on the diplomatic front, said Borrell. Referring to the checkpoint set up at the start of the Berzo Road, Borrell said that all pressure was being exerted through the UN structure so that there would be no blockade and people and goods could enter and leave Artsakh. The EU mission can't stop this checkpoint. We simply don't stand a chance. This is not an armed mission. The mission is part of the peace process, but not a substitute for it. The only solution will be diplomatic, and if there is a solution, it will be within the framework of the negotiations that are underway, said the commissioner. The government of Western Armenia has repeatedly referred the statements made by the European Parliament, which since its 1987 declaration has been partly responsible for what is happening today on Armenian territory. We once again call on international organizations and UN structures to adhere to the principles principles of the UN Charter and Fundamental Human Rights, and to adopt a more resolute policy. Artsakh and the people of Artsakh are fighting for the rights of all humanity, especially indigenous people. Geram Stepanyan, human rights defender of the Republic of Artsakh, informs that the Azerbaijani side is deliberately obstructing the entry of citizens of the Republic of Armenia registered in the Republic of Artsakh at the checkpoint illegally installed on the Hakari Bridge of the Gori Stepanakert Highway, Berzo Road. These people went to the Republic of Armenia for treatment under the blockade, and now, having resolved their health problems, they can no longer return home. It should be noted that the Azerbaijani side authorized their exit from Artsakh arbitrarily and illegally prohibited their entry. As a result of the harassment by the Baku authorities, the rights of these people have been violated not only to move freely, but also to be reunited with their families. The human rights defender stresses that since April 23, the checkpoint illegally installed by Baku on the Hakari Bridge on the Berzo Road and other measures impending the free movement of people, vehicles and goods on this road violate not only well-known international human rights standards, but also the provisions of the Tripartite Declaration of November 9, 2020, in particular point 6, which provides for the safe and uninterrupted movement of people, vehicles and goods on the Berzo Road. The cases recorded prove once again the bankruptcy of the Baku government, state propaganda and Baku's policy of systematic and organized ethnic cleansing against the people of Artsakh, the message states. The government of Western Armenia recalls at every opportunity the genocidal and ethnic cleansing policy of the Turkish authorities and Baku, which has a centuries-old history and it was after the genocide period perpetrated by Turkey against the Armenians that the term genocide entered international law in 1951 following the long efforts of Rafael Lemkin. We call on state and international organizations to unite their efforts in the policy against the above-mentioned status. We must always remember that genocide and ethnic cleansing are reprehensible crimes whose impunity will give rise to new crimes by genocidal authorities. On June 16, 2023, at the Double Tree by Hilton Yerevan Hotel, a press conference will be held on the initiative of Garnik Daftian, an expert on government affairs in Baku, with the book Hatred of Armenia in English translation. The work is based on legal acts adopted by international structures, official documents, data from criminologists, the media, and other sources, as well as the scientific works, textbooks, articles, etc. By Armenian authors, the choice of subject for this monograph is due to a number of important circumstances. In 
particular to address the subject from 1918. The degree of Armenian hatred carried out in Baku to the present day, to familiarize the reader with Armenian hatred carried out at state level in Baku, etc. The book contains the sources of international law, resolutions, treaties, conventions, etc. Adopted by international structure, the national legislation of the Baku government, the constitution codes and international obligations contracted by Baku. The book is a new form of analyzing, presenting Armenian hatred in Baku from the point of view of the law, with criminal law as its foundation, explains Garnik Daftian. It's a pity that for over a century no Armenian expert has examined the foundations and functioning of the state of Western Armenia, perhaps one day. This year, 30 important works in the field of cultural heritage from 21 countries received Europe's highest distinction. Among this year's winners is the Franco-Armenian Project, Archaeological Research for Heritage Preservation. According to Armen Press, via the message published by the European Commission and Europa Nostra, the report stated that the early Christian and medieval complex of Yereluk was the subject of an in-depth study from 2009 to 2021. A jury of European cultural heritage experts has selected 30 winners. The winners will be honored at the European Heritage Awards on September 28 at the Palazzo del Cinema in Venice. European Nostra President Cecilia Bartoli will be honored to attend this prestigious event. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian Folk Song. <laughs> 